Trump's got audio. Sorry, sorry, I'm used to that. <laughs> sorry, the race we'll start with uh, a word on Joe Moody, obviously the confirmation of, of his knee. Um, how do you see the, the loose forward, uh, sorry, the loose head prop situation moving forward? Ah, uh, yeah, officially on oh, morning, everyone. Uh, we really feel, really feel for Joe. It's been a couple of three years actually with some big injuries and. Um, he was just probably coming back into his best form for a long time, got himself into remarkable condition and I'm um, one of the form, you know, front rows of the comp uh, and, and this happened. So tough sport we play in, but thoughts are with him. And yeah, look, he's got a few more years with us, so he'll come back and rehab hard. Uh, yeah, look, we've got some really good depth, obviously, with the other All Black loose head prop with George Bauer coming in and um, Tomati Williams that can play both sides and also Finlay Brewer. So, We've got some good depth there, but there's no one like Joe Moody um, pushing this going forward. How's uh, obviously he's coming back from New Zealand? Have you, have you spoken to him? How, how's it going? Well, he's meant a few words, Rob. <laughs> he doesn't say too much. There. Like he's obviously really disappointed and quite oh, emotional at the start, and then probably realised how bad you know now it was. So he sort of started to in his mind, work through what's going to happen in the next year for him. But yeah, look, he, he was a couple of deep breaths on it. Not much was said, but I think, yeah. yeah. This week, was it always a plan to single out resting a bunch of guys like Richie, Bridge, um, again, or was that sort of a plan we sort of put together a while ago for the start of the this week? Yeah, we had planned it and it sort of changed a little bit when, uh, with that bye weekend, that we ended up playing on and just with COVID and stuff. But, you know, like obviously the protocols with the, the All Blacks and playing minutes uh, also comes into play. But we, look, it's a great chance for us to use your whole squad and bring a few guys over on tour. And there's nothing like that, like it, as you know. And being in Coogee is pretty special. And they get a chance to pull the, the jersey on in the famous league ground. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a chance for us to, for, you know, to, to trust our whole squad. Yeah, it's quite a serious foot injury, you know. It's uh, it's got a screw in there, and um, I think it was a plate that you know we got taken out as well. And uh, he, he's worked extremely hard to take this opportunity um, to get back, and, and he's right on track. Got onto his, his date that he was supposed to return to play. He played a couple of great club games, so look, he'll um, you know he's got a couple of great powerful um, quads on him and, and, and a tremendous shoulder, so he'll. He'll be ready to go for, for Saturday afternoon. Charlie Gamble and Mike Cooper, for you, would they be the best, uh, the most informed, loose forwards comp combo in the comp? Yeah, they like to get their head on the ball, don't they? Yeah, look, they, they're they good. They're, um, they're a good little combo. Obviously, we know both of them. You know, Hopes has been around forever, and Charlie was in our own backyard. So, look, we're really pleased for, for Charlie to get away on the other side of the ditch, and someone saw something in him, gave him the opportunity, he's taken it. So really, really stoked from proud for him and his family. Keith Cruz is another, and he's from the yeah, he's a local club up in Rankinner. Have you had much to do with, with him yet going back years ago, Razor? Who's that, sorry? Jeff Cruz, the other lot. Oh, could you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, could you, yeah. I had him in the New Zealand 20s as well. And he's, yep, he, he's been around. Could you, he's, um a big man. A big man, you know, there's not many big men like him. He's had a couple of knee injuries that he's come back from over over the years. Um, but it seems like he's, he's matured, he's got his body in good condition and uh, and a blue jersey. Yeah. Just, just last question, how would you say the Warriors pass have improved and did you play the play last season? Um, was there improvement from a year ago in your eyes? Oh, a much better defensive side, a little bit more... Uh, Probably a little bit more, how am I going to say this? Oh, there's definitely a bit of grit, the breakdown stuff, they're, they're brutal, they go hard at it. They're, um, yeah, they're, they're really physical side. So probably the contact side of it, we've seen some great improvements. We're expecting a hell of a battle. Um, yeah, the, it just shows what they've, you know, they kept their form for, for the majority of the year. Mm. G'day Razor, uh, an opportunity for Fergus Burke at 10 this weekend. What are the focus areas for him in terms of steering the Saders around the park? Uh, look, he played incredibly well the first couple of games of the year when uh, Richie 
uh, it wasn't there in any, any, you know, it was one of the best on field. So we just basically go back and replicate that, own the team during the week, trust your play. Uh, he's a great instinctive player, got a good skill set. So go enjoy yourself. Um, but it's your team this week. Uh, Jack's listed at, at outside centre uh, this weekend. Oh, that's the great thing about Jackie G. He can, he can play inside and outside. He's a big body. He can dent the, the line extremely well. But we're just so pleased he came straight up to play. Like, from the injuries done, played half a club game and then went straight into a, a super rugby game and it looked like he hadn't been injured. Um, so it's remarkable, really, um, because the level of, of injury and, and what the physio and the whole group and the SNC group have done in itself personally to get himself back up to that level. And, you know, he's probably played more rugby at, at 13, so it's a great combination. And and works. And you look, his knee was great after the game. Uh, there was no swelling as such, and we just went straight back into it. Uh, and it just worked perfectly with Braden with his week off as well. So I guess there's still a bit of time to just finalise what the best <laughs> is. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just didn't really, yeah, I didn't really answer your question, did I? As well as I, um, you wanted me to, but the oh look, it'll work itself out, work itself out over the um, the season. There'll be form, there'll be injuries, there'll be combinations that we look at. But you've got to have depth, and, and, and we've got some great players here. Just going back to the game against the Rebels, how much review was done in that first forty in terms of you know things like balls not sticking, penalty count, things like that. It was pretty. Uncrusaders like at, at, at that first half in particular. Yeah, ten line breaks as well. We looked at both sides of it. You know what we had created and what we hadn't finished, and and the ability for us to, um, you know, complete. You know, you, we create but not complete, and it's it, it's good. You know, the effort was there, all the effort stats, everything that we pride ourselves on, and um, we had. But you know, it's just last pass stuff, really. So um, we'll we'll do it. We'll make, we'll make sure we finish our jobs and. Uh, and keep having fun doing it. It's quite an interesting one because you can put a bit of pressure on yourself when you're uh, in those situations, but it's just making the right decision, really. Mm. Thank you. Fun. Hi, hi Scott. Uh, Liv McConnell here, mate. And, and apologies, too. I'm on a flaky internet today, so if I cut out, apologies. Um, but just, yeah. I know you've talked a lot about Pablo and, and Cullen's sort of development this year, but they really seem to hit their straps in the latter part of the game the other day. And how, how close to their optimum do you think they are? Yeah, I think Ethan was pretty handy too. Uh, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, he got a you know couple of meat pies, mate. So it, it was a it was a good little um, loose four trio. They went out there, but I think the, the ability you actually saw Pablo at his best ball in hand, you know, big left, left hand fend, can offload, hits and spins. He's a bit unorthodox. He, the way he plays that game suited him perfectly just to probably find his feet in or, you know, yeah, find his moment, and he, and he played extremely well. Uh, Cullen's playing footy, you know, like he had a disruptive year last year, a couple of injuries. Um, he's really confident and he's got his body ready for this level. Um, and, and, you know, with Ethan having the week off, you bring in Tom Christie, so it's a, um, a, you know, good options for us in the Lucy's. And what are, you, what are you expecting from the Waratahs overall? Oh, being more competitive, uh, they'll be a lot more, they're a little bit more tougher, like I mentioned, a little bit more brutal in the um, contact area. Um, and they've got some really good players, you know, they've got a good sprinkling of international players that can create a lot, so full respect into our, our week's prep. Cheers, thank you. Gordon. Morning, Razor. Hey, uh, this sort of midway point of the, the season, <coughs> now a week since uh, your trip over to Aussie, has this sort of been the refresh you guys needed? Have, have you noticed, uh, I guess, different energy in the team over there as opposed to to, to, to maybe when you were, you know, season started a long time ago in Queenstown to before you went away? Uh, yeah, look, the, the water's 23 degrees, so we get a lot of energy out of that. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? Um, oh, could you pay? What a setup! Oh, it's a pleasure to, to be.
Yeah, rugby bar, we, we, uh, we're pretty grateful to be on tour, really, in a, in a spot like this um, with all your mates. That's the first thing. But, yeah, look, we, we draw from it. You know, my, my mindset to all this about the um, cranny environment, everyone has a fun and can, and can be themselves, and that's one good thing over here is just to probably reconnect on tour. 23 days away is, is um, you've got to make sure you keep it fresh and give enough downtime, but get enough footy in. So we'll work on it. Work hard on and off the field and get a balance. Yeah. Cool, mate. That's all from me. Okay. Cheers, Gordon. Ian. So thanks. Uh, I think most of the questions I had have been asked. Um, but Scott, I just ask the uh, in terms of your decision, you know, your calculations of when you were going to rest your All Black guys. What, what made you decide on this week? Uh, because it's between five to six games in a row, so that's the balance, and that's obviously um, you don't rest them all in one week, and you've just got to make sure you you, you, um, you get your combinations right. So you know, over, over all this tour, we, we have to do it. So that was it was basically because of the run of of games, but also the, the combinations in, yeah. Just finally for me, how much were we able to gauge from the Waratahs game last night, uh, last week? It was a bit of a weird one, you know, playing yeah. off the field, uncontested scrums, you know, no hookers. How much could you gauge about where the Waratahs are at right now? Uh, you gauge around the, the contact area and the physicality, like I mentioned earlier on, and games can get a bit chaotic like that, but, oh, look, they were in it, they had a chance, didn't they? They, uh, you know, they're a little bit more... Variation and a bit more innovative the way they defend and uh, yeah, full respect and prep. That's probably our, all the answer I can give you. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Nigel, lucky last. You have so many All Blacks in, in your squad. Does it? They've been doing the sort of uh, the, the, the All Blacks management for a wee while now. Has it got easier as the years have gone through to, to be able to figure out how to balance it, even with the stipulations no. and the guidelines that are in place? No. <laughs> no. You have all the plans and they change because you, you have your little bit of a matrix. I sit down with Angus Gardner and we do a little, get our chart sorted and um, then you plan for the start of the year and it just evolves week to week with injuries like Joe's a prime example or someone gets, you know, either had COVID or it just changes a, a, a lot quite quickly. But you still have your basic framework and if it goes to plan, great. If it's not, you adapt. But it's, each year's different, you know, when you, you know, we're at 13 All Blacks that we've had to juggle o over this year and, in, and sometimes you, you've got a guy a week earlier just because he needs it or, or it works itself out that... Um, He's out, of, yeah, he's out himself and you can slot somebody else in. But you try to give the player as much um, of an early warning so he can go and do what he needs to do and have that whole week off. Not just play, but they get away from the whole environment. So in terms of then, if you're at the midway point of the season or just after, are you at the midway point of your All Blacks rest uh, protocols? Or are you oh, slightly further advanced given that how the plans have changed? Do you know off the top of your head? Are you working for New Zealand Rugby Union or what's going on here? We're, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is, this is, yeah, I'll get you nice. Sorry, mate. I was just, um, interrogated. No, the, the, the actual, um, yeah, this is pretty much it really, um, coming into the centre of the, uh, so for, for us is, you might be a couple of low, lower minute performances, but there's one good thing about the tour, we can tick that box. Yeah. question to ask but I do have to answer it. Joe is going to turn 34 years old later this year. Mm. It's a serious injury. What are your concern levels that this could be something that may stop Joe playing rugby? Uh, what I do know that he went into the injury really fit. Medical procedural surgical surgeries these days are incredible. You know the technology that they use, the rehab, um, and the process and the focus that you can uh, you can get into those ones. Jack Goodhue's a prime example. I know Joe's a little bit bit older, but um, it's all there for him. It's all there. It's you know they're reasonably positive that he will come back. You now it's just a mindset thing. So we're optimistic. That's what you what you can be. Mm. You know that the guy really.
really well. Would you back against them not being involved in a World Cup next year? Uh, well, you, you, Joe, Joe's got some grit in him, as we know. He can uh, he can fight out of some pretty tough situations in those scums. So this is another tough situation for him to fight out of. So we're right behind him. <laughs> you, you've got to have <coughs> the old surfing fraternity looks after you, Nigel. Yeah, now I've got a few locals that will up me aboard, so it's, um, oh, it's pretty special. It feels like you, when you go down the beach in the morning, it's like a triathlon, you know. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's either water, biking, running or swimming or paddle boarding. It's, um, oh, it's a pretty special environment. So, Hey, thank you. Cheers.